were talking about how the Federal Reserve is going on a $1.5 trillion shopping spree. Hey, someone has to keep buying government bonds and it sure as heck isn't going to be me right now. So what's going on here? Because unless you've been desensitized by Bernie Sanders proposals, $1.5 trillion is a ton of money. Well first, let's talk goals. It's easy to say, oh no the economy is bad right now, let me just throw some money at it. In this case, there's a little more strategy here than just trying to fix the TV by giving it a good slap on its side and hoping that jiggle sub them into place. The problem we're encountering today is, every day seems to bring with it 50 new Google alerts about how it's the worst day in modern stock market history. Now because of this, many assets that are normally liquid, easy to buy and sell, are freezing up. Most curiously treasury bonds, normally the bedrock of the global financial system. Now it's the treasury bonds that have people alarmed here, because selling a treasury bond during a down economy should be about as easy as selling a parachute in a crashing plane. They're considered a steady and incredibly boring way to weather a storm. Instead, bond prices and stock prices have moved together, not in opposite directions as they usually do. What that means is that people are ditching the system altogether instead of playing it safe with their investments. This all leads to less money in the system and with less cash but the same amount of assets, cash reserves get more valuable and everything just sorta of slows down. This is unfortunate for banks who are sitting on these super easy to sell treasuries are suddenly unable to sell them and subsequently unable to pay down short term loans or meet their overnight reserve requirements. The pipes were freezing up so the Fed had to come in and flush this liquidity into it. I don't think this was designed and I don't think anybody in the stock market thinks this is designed to say oh this is going to stimulate economic behavior. This is just going to make sure that the pipes keep flowing, that you don't have a well. The market didn't act like the crunch. Exactly, the Fed is unclogging the plumbing by buying 1.5 trillion dollars worth of pipe clogging crap. Try flushing now. Does it work? The crap buying portion of this plan is only a continuation of the Fed's plan to buy 60 billion dollars of federal bonds a month, starting last October. So where is this sticker shocking $1.5 trillion coming from? Well it's part of the ongoing effort to maintain the repo market, a market that's critical to banks and irrelevant to everyone else until it occasionally fails catastrophically. The repo markets are the pipelines by which banks can make overnight loans to each other to ensure that everybody stays in compliance with America's reserve requirements and nobody gets hit with a fine. Turns out, with cash becoming more scarce, those bank to bank loan fees were getting a little bit on the predatory side, and banks can dish it out, but they can't take it. This market has been on the fritz for quite some time. You know, they can say whatever they want. They say this is injection associated with the coronavirus outbreak. That's great. I mean, if you need to have a villain or you need to have something to blame it on, that's wonderful, except that this started back in September before the term was ever coined. So now don't get me wrong, the coronavirus certainly hasn't helped the situation, but this is not a new issue. The New York Fed has been buying treasury bills and offering temporary cash loans through so called repurchase agreements or repos since September in a bid to increase the amount of liquidity in the banking system. Think of it like cash for gold. You bring your treasury bonds to a guy for a quick buck and the understanding that you'll bring cash back later as soon as things clear up a bit. And of course, pay a slight fee in the process. These are banks we're talking about, no free lunch here. Unlike cash for gold though, on average, $2 trillion to $4 trillion in repurchase agreements are traded each day. So let's get back to the Federal Reserve's plan, because there's a little more nuance than I alluded to earlier. We're not actually buying anything with this $1.5 trillion. Instead, the Federal Reserve is getting into the repo business. Expect to see this commercial soon on Bloomberg TV. Are you a bank who needs cash fast? Have you been turned down for a loan by every other bank? Why well, don't just swing on by Jerome Powell's financing barn and we'll get you set up. 
you have treasury bills you can put up as collateral, well then we've got billions of dollars in overnight loans with your name on them. 1% fee will apply. The problem wasn't that banks didn't have access to these short term financing options, but rather the lack of liquidity in the financial system led to overnight rates that would have made even cash for gold reach out to the Better Business Bureau. You're charging me how much to hold cash overnight? What do I look like, someone trying to pay for college? The Fed's efforts appear to be working. By late afternoon, overnight repo rates had dropped to the bottom half of the Fed's target rate for the effective federal funds rate, currently 1% to 1.25%, after edging above it in the morning. Now, Some of you might hear that and be thinking, wait, that doesn't really sound like that much of a crisis. The rate edged slightly above the target and suddenly we're handing out over a trillion dollars in repo loans? That's probably a bit of an overreaction. Or as Bloomberg described it, the Fed just brought an aircraft carrier to a knife fight. Or that sounded like just the, the, the bazooka to end all bazookas on, on, on the plumbing front. A bazooka to the plumbing? Either that metaphor got away from that man or I don't want him anywhere near my home repairs. So by all accounts, the Fed was really, really just swinging for the fences with this solution. Although remember, this solution isn't costing us anything. In fact, we're getting a 1% interest rate on all of it. So I guess for now, we just really don't have to worry about this crisis hurting financial institutions ability to spend and loan money. Although their willingness to do that, well that's another story. Now all we have to do is solve all of the other pressing issues in the economy and we're good to go. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join that growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.